Greetings and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread devotional and scripture song broadcast for this 7th day of November and it is Tuesday and today's topic is titled The Fetters of Freedom and before we get started on, on that and uh, the scripture song I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and he too can be your Lord and Savior today for today is the day of salvation and there is no guarantee of tomorrow, so make sure you get that settled in your heart today to trust Jesus Christ and receive him as your Lord and Savior. And uh, that's very important that you know you're going to go spend eternity, and you certainly don't want to die in your sin, and Jesus doesn't want to um, have you perish and die and end up in hellfire. He wants to save your soul, so if you put your faith and trust in him today and believe on his death, burial, and resurrection, he will wash away all your sin and give you eternal life. And then after that, the Holy Spirit comes in you immediately and lives inside of you and teaches you as you desire to have a good walk with Him and a good relationship with Him. And that's the most important thing is to have a good relationship with the Lord after you're saved and have a good walk with Him and go out there and tell people about Jesus and what He did for you and how He can save their souls too. So let's make sure we get out there and do that also. So praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're going to start with today's scripture song, which is from Luke 8:40, And it says uh, here, And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. So um, let's go ahead and get some context of what was going on there before that and after that. So Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> it's always good to get some context really quick. So if you don't know what's going on. And so Luke 8 and verse 40. So let's go back up here to verse 38. And actually, we're going to let's see how far we have to go back uh, here. So, all right. So in verse 26, it says, And they arrived at the uh, country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time and wear no clothes neither abode in any house but in the tombs and so this is the um the man that uh, um had the legion and so that there and then continuing down down he um ends up uh casting the devils out into the swine and then the man becomes right in his right mind and then the people are scared of that and then want jesus to leave so then um so you have all that, and then verse 37, Then after all that happened, then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. So that was what I was just talking about, how they wanted him out of there because they didn't like what he did, and they would rather have the man continue with the devils instead of being in his right mind and believing on Jesus, which is pretty sad. <laughs> And then verse 38 says, Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and shew how great things God hath uh, done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. So... That's what happened there. And uh, then go on to verse 41, talking about Jairus and all that. So, amen. So now you know what's going on there. And now let's go ahead and get into the scripture song. I got the context. And press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. Luke 8, 40. And, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned... The people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people Gladly received him. 
him, for they were all waiting for him. For they were all waiting for him. Waiting for him. Waiting for him. And received him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. For they were all waiting for him. Waiting for him. Waiting for him. Gladly received him. Waiting for him. Waiting for him. Little gladly received him. Amen. So, hope that we're gladly receiving uh, Jesus like these people were and waiting for him because one day he will return. Amen. So, put that aside and sing those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for November 7th, Tuesday, 2023, titled The Fetters of Freedom. So, let me read you the passage here really quick from 1 Corinthians 9, 19. And says here, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I may gain the more. And that's Paul speaking there in 1 Corinthians 9.19. And I encourage you to read all that on your own time. And so today's author is C.S. That would be the initials for Chris Staub. And he is pastor of Silvery Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic, The Fetters of Freedom. He writes here, There was a high school history class in uh, Luzernine uh, County. That's L-U-Z-E-R-N-E, -E, Luzernine uh, County, Pennsylvania, that conducted an experiment. The teacher had the students go to public places with a copy of the Declaration of Independence to see how many signatures they could get. Out of nearly 600 people, they were able to get only 143 signatures. Hmm. Many said they believed it, but refused to sign. Only 44 recognized it as the famed document. Huh. That's probably even less now than uh, when this was uh, first done back then. And continuing on, it says there were 56 men who fettered their lives when they signed their names to the document that ended with these words, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Of these courageous signers, five were captured by the British and tortured before their death. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost sons. Two other sons were captured. Nine died of their wounds. No one, none of them, uh, re resonated uh, their uh, signatures. Uh, praise the Lord. So, didn't realize all that happened uh, after that, but good to know history. It is sad to see the high percentage of free citizens who enjoy our freedoms that have no desire to even sign the document that cost thousands of lives for their freedom, right? Because people don't care about nothing anymore. <laughs> uh, this selfish attitude seems also common among Christians. <laughs> yeah, they re uh, revel in their eternal salvation, but do nothing and just want to be left alone. Ouch, <laughs> right? He that is greatest shall be your servant, Matthew 20, 3.11, Christ's love constrains us, 
see 2 Corinthians 5.14. So let's look at that passage really quick. 2 Corinthians 5.14. And take heed to this devotional today. So let's see 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14. All right, so 514 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And verse 15 says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we uh, no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. So let's act like it. <laughs> now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So, all right. So that was some extra verses there from the top, uh, from the uh, uh, scripture there from Second uh, Corinthians 5.14. So let's make sure we're not being lazy and let's make sure we care more and have more concern for the lost and get out there and tell someone about Jesus and not be lazy and, and all that stuff as the devotional said. So... Amen. All right, so that was the Baptist bread. Good topic there, a little convicting. And now let's get into the Daily Strength, Volume 1 book by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray as we're continuing through this first week on prudence. And now today is Day 276, Tuesday. The Prudent Deal with Knowledge is the title. And Proverbs 13, 16 says, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Uh, so that is the passage there. And now the introductory thoughts. It says, People base decisions on different things. Some make choices based on their feelings. <laughs> That's not always good. So making choices based on your feelings. Not saying there's anything wrong with feelings, but if you're going to let feelings control you, it's not too, too good. So uh, some make choices based on their feelings. Others, by chance or counsel, and some by knowledge. A prudent man does not trust his feelings for making the right choices, uh, lest he be led astray. He does not believe in chance and verifies counsel before choosing his direction. When he decides, he only trusts one foundation, and that is knowledge that comes from God. So let's make sure we take that knowledge that comes from God instead of all these other things. His certainty um, for decisions only comes from facts that he can verify. Proverbs has much to say about the association of knowledge and prudence. A prudent man uh, concealeth knowledge, Proverbs 12.23. The prudent are crowned with knowledge, Proverbs 14.18. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, Proverbs 18.15. A prudent man demands knowledge and seeks after it, with his whole heart. By doing so, he avoids the terrible fate of the fools and the simple. So, good stuff there. Introductory thoughts. Now we have devotional thoughts for children. It says, The prodigal son thought it would be great to leave home and have fun. <laughs> and, uh, so, and really didn't have any fun at all. He would no longer have to obey his father's rules. <laughs> uh, however, he ended up miserable and so hungry that he would have gladly eaten the slop given to the pigs. By basing our decisions upon God's word, we can avoid the trouble that comes from making bad decisions. Mm. 
So that can be applied to anyone, not just children, but for adults too. For everyone now, it says, where can we find incorruptible knowledge? Where can we look for perfect knowledge when making difficult decisions? How can we find knowledge untainted by man's shortcomings? Well, that would all be God's word. Do you base your decisions upon the right foundation? Do you make these decisions based upon your feelings? Do you make choices based on chance? Do you take counsel without verifying the counsel with the Bible? If so, you likely lack prudence. Oh. Ah, all right, so that's for everyone. And now we have prayer thoughts. Ask God to give you the right foundation for your choices. And ask the Lord to help you seek after true knowledge. And then the song is titled The Dear Old Book, or The Dear Old Bible. And uh, couldn't find uh, this hymn in the hymn book. And so I found one that was kind of titled the same way. So maybe that was the hymn and he just had it titled differently in the book. But most of these are in the hymn book already. So but I've run across a few that weren't, but uh, are titled differently. So... Now let's go ahead and put that aside and get into the hymn uh, singing today, which both of these hymns are unfamiliar to me, so I will play you the instrumental and then read you the stanzas, so there'll be no real singing for that, so you'll probably be happy about that, So, because not a very good singer here anyway. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and listen to these two samplings here. And the first one uh, from the hymn book is... Um, 551, another one of these aspiration of the saint hymns, a psalm, and it's titled God of the Morning at Whose Voice, and this is written by Isaac Watts, who lived from 1674 to 1748, and then Timothy R. Matthews, 1826 to 1910, so no story for this one, six stanzas here, so press play and we'll listen to it, and then go from there, so here we go. All right, well, doesn't sound too difficult, so I'll try to at least sing the first stanza so you can hear the first stanza anyway uh, with the instrumental. So here we go. <clears throat> God of the morning at whose voice the cheerful sun makes haste to rise and like a bridegroom doth rejoice to run his journey through the skies. Amen. All right, so that's the first stanza there with the instrumental, and I'll just read the rest of these here. So stanza two says, From the fair chambers of the east, the circuit of his race begins, and without weariness, or rest round the whole earth, he flies and shines. Oh, like the sun, may I fulfill the appointed duties of the day. With ready mind and active will, march on and keep my heavenly way. But I shall rove and lose the, lose the race, if God my son should disappear and leave me in this world's wild maze to follow every wandering star. Lord, thy commands are clean and pure, enlightening our beclouded eyes. Thy threatenings just, thy promise sure, thy gospel makes the simple wise. Give me thy counsels for my guide, and then receive me to thy bliss. All my desires and hopes beside are faint and cold compared with this. Mm. So that is the first hymn there and now let me give you the references and we'll move on to the second hymn so stanza one we have psalm 19 1 through 4 and then psalm 19 5 and then stanza two is psalm 19 6 and then stanza three we have hebrews 12 1 and 
Philippians 2.13, stanza 4 is Hebrews 12.2, and then stanza 5 is Psalm 19.7-9, and then stanza 6 is Psalm 19.11, so most of these come from Psalm 19 and Hebrews 12, so, and then um, Philippians uh, 2.13, so that's the first uh, hymn there. And now we're going to go all the way back towards the front of the book here. I marked it. So this one is the second one here. And let me go here and get this. Sorry about that. Having some difficulty here. Alright, so this second hymn, like I said, it was titled The Dear Old Bible in the devotional book there, but in the I didn't find that particular one, so we'll do this one. I'm not sure if this is the same one as that one that was listed in the book, but this is titled The Dear Volume of Thy Book, Hymn 180. And this is the inspiration of the scriptures, a spiritual song, another one by Isaac Watts, 1674 to 1748, and then from Templi, uh, Carmenia, 1824. So four stanzas here, so I'll press play and let you listen to this one, and then read you the stanzas here. So here we go. with the first stanza here so you can hear what the first stanza sounds like with the instrumental so here we go <clears throat> Twas by an order from the Lord the ancient prophet spoke his word his spirit did their words inspire and warm their hearts with heavenly fire. I was warmed their hearts with heavenly fire. So that's the first stanza there. And let me reread you that one again. Uh, it says, "'Twas by an order from the Lord, the ancient prophet spoke his word, his spirit did their words inspire and warmed their hearts with heavenly fire. The works and wonders which they wrought confirmed the messages they brought. The prophet's pen uh, succeeds his breath to save the holy words from death. Um, stanza 3. Great God, mine eyes with pleasure look on the dear volume of thy book. There my Redeemer's face I see, and read his name who died for me. Let the false raptures of the mind be lost and vanish in the wind. Here I can fix my hope secure. This is thy word, and must endure. Amen. So that was the hymn. And now the references here. We have stanza 1 is Second Peter one twenty one, And then stanza 2 is Mark 1620 and Jeremiah 36 1 through 8 and then stanza 3 is Psalm 119 140 and Psalm 46 uh, 6 to 8 and then um, Hebrews 10 5 through 9 and then stanza 4 is Philippians 4 8 through 9 and then 1 Peter 1 25 so that is the end of the second hymn there and now I'll go back and put this aside for right now and then give you the hymn for tomorrow here in a few minutes. 
now it's time to get into the scripture songs again and then wrap it up after that so all right so yesterday was the sixth and luke 4 18 through 19 was the scripture song so here we luke go 4 18 through 19 the, the spirit, spirit of, of the lord, lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to, to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's Jesus speaking there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord to preach the gospel to the poor to preach deliverance to the captives to preach the acceptable year of the Lord to preach the gospel to the poor to preach deliverance to the captives to preach the acceptable year of the Lord Amen <clears throat> now Luke 840 840 and it, it came, came to pass that when Jesus was returned the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him for they were all waiting for him waiting for him waiting for him, waiting for him. people gladly received him and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. For they were all waiting for him, waiting for him, waiting for him. The people gladly received him, waiting for him, waiting for him. The people gladly received him. Praise the Lord. All right, so that is it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me 
give you tomorrow's scripture song, and this is one of my favorite scripture songs here, from Acts 16, 25 through 31, and it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Amen. <laughs> so that is um, the scripture song for tomorrow. And then the topic for the Baptist bread for tomorrow would be titled, Are You a Fleshly Leech? <laughs> so that will be a interesting topic there. So are you a fleshly leech? Proverbs 30 verse 15 is the passage. And uh, so I believe the author tomorrow, P.H., that's uh, um, the initials for Paul Heaton. So he will be the author for tomorrow. And that's from the Baptist Spread. So that's that. And then the Daily Strength, Volume 1 book, uh, as we continue on through um, this topic of prudence. Tomorrow is a church night, so no devotional. But uh, there is a scripture verse here from Hosea 14.9. So I'll read you that scripture verse tomorrow and then do some fight-on stories. So three fight-on stories tomorrow from the More Fight-on Stories book. This is the second volume here, More Fight-on Stories by Sam Gipp. And tomorrow uh, we have here three stories. The first one is titled, Taking Care of the One He Loved. So that is the first one there. And then the second one is titled, The First One. That's the title for that and then we have this little poem about courage from Azoria S. Davis and then the final story is titled Sergeant Jasper's Furlough so that will be the three stories for tomorrow from the more fight on book so that's that and that's on daystarpublication.com uh, or publishing.com and is where you can get that book and many others that he's written so that's that, and then there's only one hymn for tomorrow, and this is the hymn, and this is a, a familiar one, and I'm sure you probably have sang this one before. If not, you hear it for the first time tomorrow, and it's titled Close to Thee, another one of these Aspiration of the Saint hymns, hymn 552, a spiritual song written by Fanny J. Crosby, and no story for this one, so Fanny J. Crosby, and then... Uh, Silius J. Vale and so I'll give you the years that they lived tomorrow closer to thee so amen and if you want to get a copy of this hymn book if you don't have a copy already this is the cover to it and so that's that and then the Daily Strength Volume 1 book cover is this is the cover of the Volume 1 and there's four volumes to this series of devotionals and all of these are available on Melody publications.com is where you can order all those books and then the scripture song book and cds are available online or should be or you can contact brother dean and find out how to get these uh these cds and scripture song book and that's www.dailyscripturesongs.com that's brother dean and sister patty runyon's website missionaries to port kaituma guyana so pray for them and then the baptist bread devotional book this is the cover uh, for the last two months of this year, November and December, and the clock. And again, the passage on the front says, And that, knowing the time, that now is, uh, it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed, Romans 13, 11. And that's available on baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available if you want to go check those out. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God, is the first book we should be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God. 
and all that stuff and rightly dividing the word of truth and of course praying to the Lord beforehand to ask him to show us what we need to have us to see as we're reading his book and and all that good stuff so amen and if you know somebody who doesn't have Facebook you can direct them to the YouTube channel at Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and praise the Lord for these devotionals and these men that write them and these hymn writers throughout the ages so and then brother dean and sister patty of course and uh their scripture songs that they've put together and some that they wrote themselves and others they've gotten from other um people so praise the lord for all that all right and uh, if you want to listen to the podcast that's uh god's messenger lighthouse podcast where i read different uh heroes of the christian faith uh, books or missionary stories and working through brother james's book the tire tracks right now so i think i'm on chapter eight or nine um in the book so I'll be doing another reading here soon so check that out it's available to listen to on um spotify or iheart radio however you uh, those two platforms right now so uh, praise the lord and uh hello brother uh travis there watching praise the lord and all those will be tuning in either live or replay uh, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.